Oh my god. Best music ever. Deckard, are you doing the video or not? Yeah! Crap, 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 crap. Crap, 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 crap. Ow. I guess I should start this one off by saying uh, accidents happen. Sometimes even the most well intentioned thing that you can do can lead to less than thrilling results. And sometimes you kind of just have to roll with it because there's nothing else that you can do about it. A friend's mistake making more work for you, or maybe you having a bad hair day. These are things that Rarity went through that we can all relate to. But I feel this episode also gives another lesson. That sometimes we make things worse for ourselves by overthinking it. I mean, it's natural to focus on the negative. It tends to stand out. From there, it's a hop, skip, and a jump just into thinking the worst case scenario. But does that necessarily mean that it's going to happen the way that you're thinking? Rarity here displays the idea of a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, kind of when somebody gets tunnel vision, they look at all the negative things that happen to them, so that's all they can focus on, so they think that's all that can happen. Rarity could only focus on her main being missing, so because of that, she thought nothing but the worst. She was worried about what other people would say or do, and how they would react when they saw it. And it took her friends to actually not only be truthful to her, but also help her snap out of it. Sometimes you need the perspective of a friend to remind you of the positive perspectives you can have yourself. But I'm getting ahead of myself, and I'm getting a little too analytical. When we look at this episode, we already understand from all the past ones that Rarity is self-conscious. She takes pride in her appearance, which really comes out in this episode. In the past, Rarity tended to focus on the social aspect of things. Yes, she's a fashionista, but she also looked at the social interactions of that part of her life. Usually, she was more interested in the social interactions of the Canterlot High Life. But as time went on, she really learned that it was inner beauty that was better than outer beauty. Heck, even the camping episode that happened before this one already gives that moral. However, now we get to see her put this into practice. Of course, along the way, she does make some mistakes, but this also teaches another lesson. You can't always take a shortcut in order to feel better right away. In this episode, Rarity had to come to terms with herself. Goodness! All right! The only pony behaving differently today was me! Besides, what doesn't shine from the outside in? From there, she gains her self-confidence back, and she's able to act on her own. She literally bounces back off the couch, and she uses what she has rather than dwelling on what she's lost. And the key thing is, she doesn't blame anybody else for what happens, aside from understanding she made a mistake. She's constructive with what happened, she's mature about how it happened, and she works with what she has. This sets an excellent example for the moral that it's trying to teach. Now that the moral analysis is out of the way, I want to talk about a couple of my favorite parts from this episode. Number one, kick the baby. While Rarity sets a good example, Pinkie Pie does not. After the twins get stuck to the floor, she tries kicking them up and then uses a crowbar. Number two, the expression Rarity has when she gets hit with a book. It just shouts, I'm so done with you, Pinky. Number three, Twilight Sparkle inadvertently calls Rarity a sad pony. Ponies treat me like the sad, invisible pony I've become. Rarity, you're not invisible. Now some of you might say, Rarity is sad. She's not happy about her hair. But I think Rarity was talking more about the idea of being pathetic. When you leave that part out, Twilight, you kinda agree with it. Harsh. And last but not least, Rarity talking to the spooky eyeballs. This part's a little bit meta. All the eyes do is just stare from the background. Well, that and one gets poked in the eye with a stick. It's just the nonchalant way that they handle the things in the Everfree Forest, and how the spooky eyeballs of wild animals takes a backseat to Rarity's problem. They may have teeth and claws, and maybe those two eyes are part of a set of six, but who cares? They can see her hair. 
Though to be honest, Barry was probably the scarier thing to look at in the forest. I don't blame them for running. At any rate, what did you guys enjoy about the episode? Post in the comments below. And as always, thanks for staying a while to listen.